Welcome to the Serpent Rogue. So in today's video, I'll be showing you a really nice beginner's guide to this game. There's a lot you can do in this game. It's very in-depth. This uh, guide will be pretty broad. It's be way too much time on this video if I went very, very in-depth with everything, but no worries. I'll be covering a lot of content for this game, a lot of guides within the next few days. So make sure you guys stick tuned for that. If you are new, please take the second and just subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. I work very hard on these videos and they take a long time to make. We also have a, a Discord community going. If you guys like to join that, there's a link down below in the description. We have a nice little community going on for the Serpent Rogue right now. There's some stuff in there. You can see what people are doing, get some ideas, and really learn more about this game there as well. So to begin, this is where the game dumps you off at. Uh, you can see we have our map up here. So guys, the first thing we're going to do is to jump right off this cliff right here. We'll go right to this chest. Now, you're about to see this is basically how much of a tutorial the game gives you. You'll get these little prompts occasionally throughout the game, which don't get me wrong, they help, but the problem is you have to like stumble upon them to actually get them to pop up like that. Uh, we're going to loot this chest, and then on our way to our next area, we're going to pick up everything that we see. Now, this game is pretty heavily based around you having followers like taming creatures you can buy you can buy like ghosts and stuff to fight with you and crafting potions which is like the big thing um and in order to do so we need to get stuff in our journal like we're doing right now that's how we discover stuff and we also need to be picking up everything because we have to learn those different things to, be able to craft potions with so like the aloe we picked up we had to have a certain amount of that and we have to learn it before we can actually use it to craft with potions which you guys will see in a second here now once we get to our next zone which will be right here come right here and explore this guy you'll get some stuff from there we got a coin a pick lock and a damage potion and before you do anything else we're gonna be crafting our first potion very shortly here it's gonna be a healing plus potion it's extremely good to have early on and in order to get to that point we need to kick this log which sounds very random but I promise you there is a reason for this you're going to get three worms from this log. Now, I can't kick it again. Uh, stuff respawns in this game over time. Like, you can rest and stuff, and like every day, day and a half, things will respawn. You can come back and farm them again. But we're going to come down here to this water, and we are going to get some fish bones. So we need fish bones to make this potion. And we have three worms, so you're going to want to do this three times and try to catch all the fish bones that you can. If you don't get every single one, it's okay. You really only need nine minimum. But the more you get, the more potions you'll be able to make. So now I am out of worms. That's okay. We used all three of them. The next thing we're going to do, guys, is whenever you see barrels like this, just kick them. Uh, you're not guaranteed loot out of them, but you can get stuff. Like we got cheese out of that one. Um, there is a big crafting like for food and stuff in this game. We got some metal scrap. Metal scrap is extremely important. It's how we make swords and axes, shovels, all of our equipment, basically. But now we're coming to this house. And this is where you're going to see the first thing. So we have this potion station. It's a brewing station. It's where we make potions. You can see all this stuff is unexplored though, which means we cannot use it to craft potions with. We have to research it first at a research table. So I have one out of three tea leaves. Now this aloe, we have four, which means we can now use it to craft with. And same with the fish bone. That's why you have to use all three worms. So like I only have one of these, which means I'll be able to make one health potion to start with, which isn't great, it's rather than none. But if you get more than one bone, if you end up with four, which means you get 12 fish bones in total, you have four left over, you can make four health potions and it will take you a long way. Next, we're gonna pick up those logs and we're gonna go here and we're gonna make some food. See, we have one here. Now, if we put multiple things in this and we, we go to cook, if this is not something that's good, you'll lose your food. We don't wanna do that early off because we, we just don't know, right? So we're gonna remove that. I'm gonna put two of these on there and we're gonna cook with that and we're gonna get a choice steak out of it. And last but not least, we have the warden chest. These chests are spread out all over the game. Think of them as like a universal bank, essentially. And anything you put into this guy is going to be there when you go to another location as well. And take out this portable lab recipe. And you're gonna wanna learn this right now so you don't forget to do it later. Now, once you have done that, the only thing that's left to do, guys, is really explore this area. Take your time. Like, everything is used for stuff. Like, taming requires different foods for the animals and even people. You can you can have people that follow you. Pick up these pumpkins. Get all these tea leaves. This bush over here by this house. Grab, there's berries on there. Grab those. Once you are done kind of exploring, come up to this guy right here. So this is Solomon's portable lab. Uh, he's gonna give this to us. We can craft and research off this thing and we can take, we carry it basically. So we're just going to research and we're going to research the berries and we're going to research the tea leaves. 
now we have everything we need now to make our first potion. So I'm going to show you how this works. Now I'm going to have a video that's coming out that it goes in a way more in-depth on how to actually make potions and do them correctly. But for now, we're just going to make our first potion together. So we're going to do the berries, the fishbone, and the aloe. And make sure they're in this order. This, this stuff actually matters. And we're going to press craft. And we will get our first mm -hmm. healing plus. Now, once you have something learned like this, it will always be in your recipes on the left-hand side, so you don't have to, like, remember them. They'll be there once you do them one time. Next, you're going to come right around this corner. There's going to be a little coin purse. Pick that up, get some coins, and then you have to go through this kiosk. Uh, this is a way to make money. I don't think it's the best way to make money in the game. I have a video coming out for a money farming method. It's absolutely nuts. It's very quick to make money in this game by doing this method, but that's in a later video. But basically, you know, for five gold, if I get my health potion, I'll get five gold. It's not worth it. Keep your potions. Once you've done everything you need to do here, pick up your workbench. Or your portable lab workbench. It's all the same thing. And we're going to go to the camp. Now, there's a lot at this camp. Uh, right to your left, come right here. It's going to be charcoal. Pick that up. And we're going to get our first equipment, which is an axe. Now, I always put these on my hot bars now some other things in this area we have this well if you throw 100 coins in there it basically gives you stuff i don't want to spoil it i'll have that in another video but that's just down the road this is your pantry right here uh so in this area basically you, you put food in there if you have human followers they will eat from this pantry and we also have the bushes aloe stuff just literally everywhere like i said do not be afraid to pick this stuff up if it's gonna respawn, you can store it in your warden's chest. You're gonna need to make health potions. And then we have another thing we can explore right here. It's okay, it takes some damage. We're gonna explore this and get some stuff from it. We got an axe from that as well. So now we have two axes where we'll put one away. If we come up this hill, we have a warden chest in this hut right here. And back there, those dogs are. So that's our first tameable animal, which we're gonna do later in this video. But that trough right there, that's the same thing like with the human's pantry. You can put food in there and the animals will eat it if they like it. Now, last but not least, we have the forge. So right here, we can go here. You can enhance stuff. You can also forge things too. It requires wood, charcoal, uh, metal scrap, cloth. Like if you want to make torches, it requires cloth and wood. So the next area we're going to be going to, there's really the first hostile area. There's a lot to do there. Um, so make sure you try to travel as light as you can. So this is the wasteland. This is our, gonna be our first area with hostile NPCs. You're gonna see corrupt NPCs. You're gonna see normal NPCs. Uh, corrupt NPCs will always attack you. They're, uh, they're instantly hostile. Um, there are some ways to get them to avoid you though, which you guys will see in a minute here. But this is really where we're gonna be starting to farm some of the stuff that we need to progress in the game. All right, now that the cutscene is over. So there's two ways we can go. We can go straight or we can go to the right. Now we have to keep an eye on this indicator in the top of our screen up here. So this is a corrupt storm. That's what, At least that's why I like to call it. Basically when that thing hits 100%, we want to be out of the wasteland and go back to camp. Um, we will take damage, just like you do with initially at the start of the game, and it will kill you eventually if you don't get out. And the other nice thing too is about the, when this resets every day, day and a half, um, like up there, like this is a chest. It's called a moonstone chest, which I'll show you guys later. Uh, this stuff all resets and it's, it will spawn in different places here. It's like that location for that chest is not static. It can spawn over here. It can spawn up here. And what we're really looking for right now is a torch. So there is a torch right there and we got lucky because it's lit. So there's three things that can happen. Like this little stand this torch is in, that is not static either. That can spawn literally anywhere in here. You're not guaranteed a torch. Uh, that could be empty. That could have a lit torch like ours does or it could have a faded torch. Now, if it has a faded torch, you'd have to equip it like this. And basically what you would do with that case is you would take it out and you just walk into that fire. The fire will not hurt you and the torch will light. The other thing are these little tornadoes. If you research these, they're, they're kind of sprawled out everywhere. It'll show you what's lootable at the time in the area. So textile is cloth. That's how you make more torches. And you can see on our map, we have some stuff laying around here. So I'm going to start looting some of this stuff. When you walk by these spores, they're going to turn red. Do not go in there. That will kill you. These guys can spawn NPCs like that chicken right there. So if we go to our map, we can fast travel since this area is now is unlocked. I'm just going to travel back to camp. I haven't noticed anything by fast traveling, like losing hunger or anything like that. I don't think there's really any negative reason for fast traveling but what we're gonna do now is for some reasons people have a really big issue like just getting charcoal they think you only can get is by cooking food 
Uh, what you can do is you can throw logs on the ground like this. Do it right there. And then if I take my torch, I can throw it at that and this will make charcoal. It takes a second. Once the logs are on fire, pick your torch back up. You can put it away because that takes durability. And then just wait. And else will turn into charcoal. This is how you can learn charcoal very, very quickly to unlock it for potions and stuff. I don't know why so many people had an issue trying to figure that one out. Before we go back to the wasteland, once you have your torch, what you're going to want to do before the durability runs out, we're going to want to come all the way in the top right. Now these thorns, if you walk into them, they will hurt you, but with fire on a torch, they go away. And we want to light these things because this will keep this area open for you. And there's also another explorer note right here. And this is going to take us to the pier. So at the pier, there's a few things you can do. There's a warden's chest here. There is one of our first recipes that we can get, which is right here. It's a pick locking recipe. This is where you can buy ghosts off the ghost ship. If we talk to the uh, harbor master here. With gold coins, you can buy ghosts and they'll follow you and fight for you and stuff like that. Now there's another thing right there. I don't have glass. You can get glass by breaking files and such. We just don't have anything at the moment. But we do have another warden's chest. And just like in the wasteland that has that corrupted storm, when that hits 100%, the ghost ship will come, and then that's how you uh, can get sailors and stuff like that and people. Um, I will show that in a different video, though, where it's a little more detailed. There's also going to be an area here you can uh, get some more worms from, for more fish bones if you want them. These thorns, you walk through them, you take some damage, but you will destroy them. They'll hurt you over time for a little bit. If we press C here, you can see our stats, like we're wounded right now, and that will go, that circle will finish, it'll turn to a 1, it'll finish again, it'll be, and then it'll be gone. So that's pretty much the harbor, there's not a ton there, there's a few things to loot. So now we're going to go back to camp, you just saw the storm was going on. Um, once that storm passes, we're going to go back in the wasteland, and our goal is to get chicken meat. If we can get meat off a chicken, we can tame that dog. So this is a totem. You can transform into a rat, chicken, or dog. Your weight has to be basically almost nothing. It's not my favorite thing. But they are here. These spawn randomly as well throughout the area. When you come back, this will not be here. Or it could be. It could be a different area. It's just how this is day to day. It's so like this boat right here. If I was a rat right now, I could go into that boat and find some stuff. But what we're looking for right now, I'm not seeing it, unfortunately, which is okay. It was that, that chicken meat. But what we're going to do instead is, guys, I'm going to show you how to get a lot of good loot uh, in this game. We're, we're kind of coming towards the end of this beginner's guide anyway. I'm trying to keep it really short as I can. So we, we're going to unlock what's called the Moonstone Chest. Now, this chest respawns every time you come in here like everything else. It is that chest right up there on top of those steps, and it requires us to have three Moonstones. So the Moonstones only spawn in three areas. A corrupt animal or NPC will have a moonstone a normal NPC will have a moonstone and then the third one will be in a chest which is actually in this chest right here in these vines now these vines they can spawn anywhere in this area but there will always be a moonstone in the chest and there's our other moonstone on the corrupt that's perfect so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here open the chest we're gonna take everything I'm gonna hit this guy really quickly get that moonstone and then we just need to find the last moonstone, which is going to be on a non-corrupt NPC. And I don't see the fawn. The fawn only spawns in that bottom left-hand corner there. Oh, and there it is. That dog has our uh, has our moonstone. So we're going to discover this dog. We're going to discover this dog. And we are going to fight this dog for the last moonstone. I don't see a bush, so I always have to steal it off of it. So what we're going to do now is go back to that chest. I'm going to show you guys what we get. Uh, the loot is sort of randomized to some degree, but you always get metal scrap, which is needed to craft axes and swords and hatchets and all the other equipment. We're going to get some money. We're going to, we're going to get weapons out of this, or at least we should. Let's go up here. I'm going to open this up. And look at all this loot that we got. So we got some swords, we got a ring, some metal scrap, food, a lot of coins. We got a lot of coins from this as well. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm actually overweight. Uh, so now there's two options we have. Um, we can try to walk back with everything. Well, there's really three options. We can try to walk back with everything like we are. I can drop stuff, fast travel out, 
bank it and come back, which is what we're we're gonna Ooh. do. Or you can just drop stuff and not come back. So once you get raw meat from a chicken, all you have to do is put it in your hot bar, come up to something like this dog, for example, and you're gonna, we're gonna feed them. Now, they have to be hungry in order to tame them, obviously. If they're not hungry, they won't eat uh, the weight. I'm gonna feed him one more time and he's gonna be ours. Now you can see he's tethered to us now. If uh, there's his food bar just like ours, we're gonna feed him one more time, it'll go up. There it goes. And we have different options with him. So we can make him wander, he can wait, he, we can expect him, we can open his inventory, which he has wool on him, we're gonna take that off him. We can play with him. Uh, we're gonna make him wait in here. So as long as he's in this pen, if I put more food in here, he'll eat when he needs to. Now the last thing I wanted to show you guys is really just how to make equipment. Um, just like with potions, you kind of have to play with it a little bit. So like for torches, I don't have cloth, which is textile in this game. Uh, but we can make other things. So like if I put three metal scrap in here and a log, we can, I think that makes a sword, I believe. It does, that makes a sword. Um, you have to have charcoal to be able to do this, but now we've that learned forever. Uh, same thing, like if I remove one scrap and we craft with that, it'll make a shovel. Um, so that's kind of how that works. It's the same thing as potions. You just have to play with it and see where it goes. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I know this video is a little bit longer than I intended on it being. Uh, there's just really a lot to this game. Um, I didn't go super in-depth into everything, like a strict taming or anything, or like for the potions or the equipment or anything like that. Uh, all that will come. There's going to be videos just dedicated to those things to really cover it in detail, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But as always, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you subscribe, come talk to me on Discord, and I'll see you guys in the next video.